Yeah, guys, it's no secret that crime in Colombia is an issue. In fact, according to SLED's most recent crime report, Colombia saw its highest crime rate in eight years in 2020. Attorney General Alan Wilson and his staff are working hard in the office right behind me, trying to find answers about false school shooting alarms that affected multiple schools in the state of South Carolina yesterday. A big reason why River Bluff High School was picked to host this national event has to do with its facilities. The gym right behind me isn't just your average high school gym. In fact, it seats up to 4,000 people and it's bigger than some D2 and even D1 basketball gyms. Now it takes a lot more than just rhythm to make sure you're a great ballroom dancer. It requires poise, posture and precision so your scores don't dip. Now the South Carolina Dames played in a stadium just about this size earlier this year, but it wasn't a college football stadium. It was Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee. The NCAA tournament is single elimination, meaning one off game could cost any team their season, making putting the ball in the back of the net that much more important. Now, if the bill is passed without exemptions, it'll head straight to Governor McMaster's desk to be signed. If passed with exemptions, it'll go back to the House for continued deliberation. A decision is expected as soon as tonight. Reporting live outside of the State House for Carolina News, I'm Kendall Smith. Yeah, guys, it's no secret that crime in Colombia is an issue. In fact, according to SLED's most recent crime report, Colombia saw its highest crime rate in eight years in 2020. But at the mayor's office right behind me, Daniel Rickenman and his staff are celebrating a big win to help fight crime in the capital city. This is not a situation that we can police our way out of or arrest everyone um, that it will not solve the problem. Crime in Colombia is a problem that's plaguing the city. But on Tuesday, Columbia City Councilwoman Tina Herbert and her colleagues voted to do something about it. Prevention is absolutely critical. It's important for us to take a stand. Spearheaded by efforts from Mayor Daniel Rickenman, the council voted to allocate $150,000 of funding for the Office of Violent Crime and Prevention to hire a director. A spokesperson for Rickenman, Logan McVeigh, says this new role is necessary, as 2% of Columbia's land mass is where 53% of total city violent crime happens. The size of a football field, you know, accounts for at one, in one place like 5% of all the crime. The council will spend a total of $800,000 over two years on the Office of Violent Crime and Prevention. But Councilman Howard Duvall voted against that amount, citing a burden on future city council members. Our council cannot bind future councils with programs. Duval did, however, vote for the initial $150,000 funding, and so did Herbert, who says an outside perspective will be beneficial. We're going to let the people who really specialize and understand how to address um, reducing violence then come and give us some recommendations on how they think the city can best serve. Now, City Council is wasting no time in finding someone to fill that director's role for the Office of Violent Crime and Prevention. Councilwoman Tina Herbert told me they're hoping to have the role filled in the first few months of 2023. Reporting live outside of Mayor Rickman's office in Columbia for Carolina News, I'm Kendall Smith. Thanks, guys. It's been a long week here at the State House where senators are debating potential abortion laws more restrictive than the current 20 week abortion ban in South Carolina. Now, this comes three months after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade when the steps right behind me were filled with protesters. This time, though, things look and sound a lot different. Inside debate. Outside silence. Not what you'd expect during a protest. This is absolute travesty. Like this, this is, this is, it's disgusting. Sarah Frick has had two abortions, a procedure she assumed was a right. Now in jeopardy. This is a huge sacrifice to be here and if it wasn't so important, I would not be here. 
All week, state senators debating a bill that will ban nearly all abortions in South Carolina if passed, with no exceptions in cases of incest or rape. As Republicans push the bill to pass, Senate Minority Leader Brad Hutto is concerned it could harm women's rights. That there's a group inside that Senate chamber who is saying to the women of South Carolina, we don't trust you. Until a decision is made, protesters are anxiously watching, waiting. A silence and emotions ring loud outside the Senate chamber. What makes me really sad, because I think of all the women that will suffer, that don't have the resources that I have. I think of the vulnerable communities that are going to suffer, that don't have um, anyone to stand up for them. Now, if the bill is passed without exemptions, it'll head straight to Governor McMaster's desk to be signed. If passed with exemptions, it'll go back to the House for continued deliberation. A decision is expected as soon as tonight. Reporting live outside of the State House for Carolina News, I'm Kendall Smith. Through the curtains of this Columbia dance studio lies music movement, and multiple world title trophies. We won the, the 10 dance, we won the ballroom, we were second in the Latin World Championships. That's Jamie Barrett, the owner of Elite Ballroom Academy. She's also a national champion dancer thanks to the instruction of her business partner and teacher, Stefano Placidi. I believe that dance is something so beautiful that gives us the chance to do something together. Placidi is a world-renowned dancer who's taken his talents all the way from Italy right here to Colombia. Traveling all around the country for competitions, it's Placidi's focus on technique that brings home the hardware. We just wanted to prove that uh, it's not really the geographic position of a place, but most of it the passion that the people have. In now it takes a lot more than just rhythm to make sure you're a great ballroom dancer. It requires poise, posture, and precision so your scores don't dip. But dancing doesn't always have to be about winning awards. Some clients like Bucky Gardner come to dance for fun. And it's great, great exercise. It's a lot of fun. Even I tried it out and it's not as easy as it looks. But Gardner says anyone can dance. If you have a heartbeat and you can walk, you can dance. As Plotchity and Barrett continue to bring ballroom to Columbia, they're also making the world their stage. It's, it's a dream come true. Reporting in Columbia for Carolina News, I'm Kemple Smith. South Carolina was alive in Death Valley on Saturday, with head coach Shane Beamer and his team earning a statement win over Clemson and praise from fans like Jackson Purcell that have waited almost a decade for a win over the Tigers. I think I lost my voice the entire week and just screaming. It was awesome. The victory is Beamer's second top 10 win in two weeks, and with it being just his second year at Carolina, his quick success has earned buy-in from alumni, fans, and students like junior Jack Looney. Shane Beamer is a great man. Love him, love everything about him, love his whole family. And Wes Mitchell, a football and recruiting insider at Gamecock Central, says Saturday's win wasn't just huge for current morale, but it set the tone for the future of South Carolina football. Just the perception of beating Clemson, uh, it gives kind of the idea that South Carolina is a program on the rise. Wins like that don't come easy, though, and building program culture doesn't come without work. Now what fans see are big wins happen in big time stadiums like Williams Bryce right behind me, but they don't see where the magic really happens. And that's right here at the Long Family Football Operations Center, where Shane Beamer and his staff are working hard to make sure South Carolina didn't just beat Clemson, but they're keeping those wins rolling for seasons to come. But Mitchell says Beamer has got the support he needs because there's no better way to endear yourself to the fans than by beating Clemson. I think with Shane Beamer, it's more like this is our guy. Like, I think he's one of us is something that Carolina fans probably feel. 
So while Clemson might be all in, South Carolina is bought in. I think he's the GOAT. He's probably the greatest coach to ever coach college football. He is amazing. I love Beamer Ball. Reporting for Carolina News in Columbia, I'm Kendall Smith. Game day is this weekend coming up on Saturday. South Carolina taking on Missouri. I love to do my fall fit check. It's supposed to be a high of 70 on Saturday, low of 55, just a 6% chance of precipitation. So luckily for you, going to be nice and sunny, but might get a little chillier that game at four. So the sun will set probably about the third quarter. Going to be about 67 degrees. So maybe wear your jersey, maybe wear a little long sleeve shirt under it just so you're comfortable out there. Long pants, clear bag policy, and then no U of SC, strictly USC going forward. If you saw that big news yesterday, which we talked about on Carolina News. Now let's bring it back to the Carolinas. The Panthers lost on Sunday. The Hornets lost last night, but the Hurricanes gave Carolina fans a treat on Halloween, defeating the Capitals in a three to two overtime thriller. Both Brent Burns and Andre Svechnikov scored in the shootout, vaulting the Canes to victory in Raleigh. Svechnikov is now tied for second in the NHL for most goals scored with eight. Now what's next for the Canes? Well, they'll have a tough test on Thursday, facing the Tampa Bay Lightning on the road with puck drop set for 7 p.m.